Hello riders and uh, today I am in London at Bolt Motorcycles and we're talking about this beautiful custom built Buell and I'm waiting for Andrew who is the owner of this amazing place as well It's cold today <laughs> Hey, how are you doing? Can we talk first of all okay. about your motorcycle? Right, and right. So you're riding it. Yeah, I've taken it. We went to Amsterdam on it. We did a few Europe trips really? on it. So how many miles roughly you did it after it was built? 10,000 maybe. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So we rode it quite a lot. Properly a few ride summers. It. Yeah, yeah. Is it comfortable? Well, it should be because it was all built around my size, really? my geometry. Yeah, it was built for real practical purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, I say, I, I hesitate because of the V-twin engine, the yeah, vibrations yeah, yeah, yeah. on a long journey. It's quite, yeah, the Buell has this really high frequency vibration and you get your hands go numb after a bit, it kind of goes all through you, yeah. <laughs> so it's built around you and you're tall, how, how tall are you? I'm 6'4". Yeah. And yeah. it's quite a small bike, I always have to buy, buy the biggest bikes I can find because yeah, yeah. otherwise I look silly on them. Yeah. Um, we chose it because it's a bike of contrast, we wanted to kind of a Harley shouldn't ever be a cafe racer. It mm -hmm. just doesn't make sense. It's too big, a heavier an engine. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted it to be kind of modern, but then retro. Um, the main thing was to show, because what we do with everything, it's about the handcraft and the human element to things. We really wanted to showcase the fabrication that mm -hmm. to build a proper custom bike, for me, it's around kind of, a lot of it is the metal work and getting hands on and some of the old skills. Or so like all of this is hand. It's all hand done, yeah. We worked with um, Jake of Vintage Engineering in Hastings mm -hmm. and he's known for, he makes girder forks for mm -hmm. classic bikes and then does some very kind of really old 1920s. He's always working like Scots and Bruffs and Japs and he kind of, and Bruff Superiors, he's building a lot of those. So yeah, he kind of works with really old heritage vehicles mm -hmm. and he kind of hand makes everything from the frames to the tanks and so, so forth. So the tank, the hump and the fender, everything is hand. Yeah, we kind of, the original bike has a very large aluminium piece on the mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. and then the rest of it was all plastic. You've got a plastic tank, yeah, yeah. you've got some awful yeah. kind of air, unnecessary air filters mm -hmm. here, this big scoop on the bottom. And most people who have a Buell take all of that off, even uh -huh. if they don't do, most people don't customise Buells. It's a kind of bike where people kind of, there's a, it's a niche bike, it's a real Marmite bike. A lot of people don't like you messing with Buells, which I was quite surprised till after we built it, I found out. Um, but it's, it's an incredible engine, it's an incredible bike to ride, it's the bike that's killed the most people per ratio of the amount there was. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incredibly aggressive. Uh, it sounds like no other bike. It's like a Harley, but super tuned up. Mm -hmm. He was ahead of his time. He was brought into Harley Davidson in the, I believe in around the 70s. All the Japanese bikes were killing it on the GP circuits and Harley wanted a piece of the action. Mm -hmm. And they brought in Eric Buell to kind of write build us a race team mm -hmm. and he was just some of the, the designs some of the things he does was so different to anyone else it's kind of really standout brand to me and also everyone loves a harley or, or do they but everyone wants a harley secretly but i wasn't i'm not a <laughs> i'm not really a chopper guy and all yeah. of that but this was my way of having a harley which kind of suited what i do mm. i kind of i like to ride English roads, cafe races make sense. So I wanted a Harley that suited yeah, that style of riding. Yeah. yeah, so that's how the idea came of having a Buell as a donor bike. Yeah. And then why you decided aluminium? Why did you decided to go old school? As All as my well? bikes have always been aluminium. Really? I just, yeah, my Triumph's aluminium and some before that have always been. I just love aluminium on, on bikes. And you just keep the original um, color, you don't. I didn't want to paint it because I wanted all the imperfections. It's not perfect, you know, and I didn't want it to be. It's made for a bike to ride. It's, it's not handmade. Yeah, and I wanted you to see that it's been handmade. There's mm. absolutely hundreds of hours yeah, that yeah, have gone into yeah, that. Yeah. But I wanted the imperfections. I wanted the little bits that show and you it's been beaten yeah. with a hammer and an English wheel. Otherwise, you kind of lose all of that. It yeah, might as well yeah. be fiberglass. And the thing with the fairing is, I wanted to push this bike to the limit and what I was finding was, you know, as with any bike, the faster you go, the more resistance you mm -hmm. get down. With this, it was all built around my size and it just throws the air mm -hmm. over you. And if you get it up to a good speed, 70, 80, 
you kind of get this sweet spot where everything goes silent. The wind's going over you and, and it's a beautiful feeling, no, yeah. I want a fender. <laughs> yeah, no, I was like before, but with this bike, it's just great. You hit that sweet spot, the fairing does its job and you're just in this kind of quiet zone. It's lovely, yeah. Did you took it on the track? I wouldn't, I was too scared to drop it. <laughs> I think <laughs> if precious. I had to go and get this remade, Jake would probably fall out with oh, me, so okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we wanted a kind of arts and craft vibe to it as well. So we wanted to show off Jake's skills at metalwork. Mm -hmm. So all this kind of ornamentation here, mm -hmm. and then the really complex curves on the back end. Mm -hmm. It was kind of to show, you know, how, what you can do with metal and how far yeah, you can tweak yeah. it and push it and so forth. And it's a hard bike to work with because most have a flat frame. Mm -hmm. Here we've got a trellis kink frame. Have you changed the frame at all or, or it's all original? We chopped the back off, mm -hmm. so this subsection's all mm -hmm. new. Um, everything from here back is different. Mm -hmm, the back end. Mm. Um, this is difficult to do. I know Foundry are doing something at the moment on a Buell, mm -hmm. which I'm really excited to see. Mm -hmm. And they, I think. Foundry I, Motorcycle. Yeah, mm -hmm. I believe he's done a whole new frame, or he's adapted the frame oh, quite a lot. He's been working on this for years, I think it's really? his own personal project. Mm -hmm. but There's very few Buell customs out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I found maybe Deus did one once, Red Max Speed Shop, he mm -hmm. did a Buell once, but there's very few out there. So it's kind of a new, a new area. We want, we didn't want to do a bike that everyone else had done. Yeah. So yeah, the Buell yeah. was kind of they that. Yeah, they, they, they've done it because it works, you know. Um, but yeah, we wanted a bit of a challenge with this. And yeah. the bike I loved uh, when I first got it, it's so much fun to ride. And it was like. I, I love the bike and then I thought right, this is the one I want to spend the money on and do something yeah. with. And how much roughly it would cost to like buy a build like this? Uh, about 15,000. Okay. The amount of hours for the metal work is where the money is yeah, really. Yeah, I mean yeah. there's probably 150 hours put into this. It took eight months I think oh to, God, to finish. To it was quite like a long the, time. Yeah. Oh my God. But thankfully it finished just as we opened the shop. Mm -hmm. So no it didn't no we got it and it had to go back. But yeah we more or less got it just as we opened yeah, so it worked yeah. out okay. Anything else you've changed? Tell us uh, other things. I can see a little bit of a motor gadgets. The top end's yeah. bigger so it's now a 1350 instead of a 1250. Mm -hmm. So the top end's been expanded. Mm -hmm. um, what so have, have you changed done? the forks or, or the original ones? The forks are the original. Mm -hmm. I can see the clocks and, and everything. You well, all this was like custom the... made. That was done by oh, Toshi. Oh, so yeah. that's custom made. Okay. Yeah, I, the but original's you, you quite the ugly. Clocks. The clock's original, yeah. but the plate they've mm -hmm. been sat in, that was done by Tosh. This is all different. Mm -hmm. That was handmade by oh, Tosh yeah. as well, I believe. Um, the seat? The seat and everything, all of that was custom, yeah. Mm. Um, beautiful. I like it. Mainly the body, I mean the engine, but the top end's been increased, the exhaust's been changed, mm -hmm. the oil reserves put on. Mainly with the Buell it's taking stuff off, it's mm -hmm. getting all the clutter and all the plastic mm -hmm. off of them. I mean all the little things like we've got the um, motor gadget mm -hmm. indicators. Mm -hmm. Have you tuned it? Have you done anything to the engine? Apart from increasing the top end, mm -hmm. no. It doesn't need it. It doesn't? I mean I'm I'm not a good enough rider to take this bike past what it can okay. do already, you know. Um, it's it's pretty terrifying as it is. I don't think it needs any more. Okay. <laughs> it looks looks like you can do miles. Well, that was the idea. When Jake gave it to me, he said I wasn't really allowed to polish it. He says, don't piss about with it. Just let it go milky. Let it do its thing and ride the bike. He yeah. was very much like, I'm not building this just to be a show pony, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and that was it. Whenever I put it in shows, I've never washed it or polished it. I really? just put it so in. So you as just it put is. it as it because is now? It's a bike to bike. Yeah, I always like bikes with patina or sole. I mean, for my scooter, it's a wreck, but you know, it's got a lot of character. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I, I like a ridden bike, really. Uh, maintain the bike like this. Does it cost a lot? Do you have to go to a special place? Uh, like, do, um, you do service yourself or how, how it works? They're quite complicated engines. It's got an ECU in it and it's got fuel pumps and a lot of things that older bikes I'm more used to don't have. Mm -hmm. So I do go to a specialist. Mm -hmm. Buell uh, specialist? There is a Buell specialist up in Manchester but he hated it. I was really, why? He, he was like, why would you ever 
changeable. Oh, yeah. Because he's so old people. school. I wanted to ask that was one of my questions. Like, view lovers, what do they say about Because it's such a... Like, it's a love-hate thing. Some people love it because, you know, Buell's very plasticky. It's quite an ugly bike in some ways, mm -hmm. you know. And as, as out the factory, it yeah, really is yeah. an ugly bike. But yeah, I was really surprised. I thought he'd be interested to see something different on a bike. It's it's <laughs> built for improvement. It's not built, you know, to take anything away. Yeah, it's yeah. adding to the bike, you know. But yeah, he was yeah, he wasn't too happy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta just do what you wanna do. Yeah, it's your yeah, bike. Exactly. You know, exactly. if you're gonna ride and it, it will build be it for your point. Who, yeah. yeah. You'll, if you listen to people, I always say, uh, a camel is a horse designed by committee. Yeah. If you listen to too much people, you just end up with something that doesn't make sense. You've got to have a strong idea, a vision, and just follow it. Yeah, that's a good advice for every bike builder. <laughs> <laughs> Very good advice, especially if you are on YouTube and everyone says that your hump is not nice. <laughs> just stick with it. <laughs> stick with the hump. They learn to love stick, it, and if they don't exactly. like it, well, you stick know, with your hump. <laughs> it's your bike at the end of the day. Oh, no. Really, if you had to categorise the bike, it's more of a sports tourer than a cafe racer. Mm -hmm. I say that because it's got flat bars. We didn't drop the bars oh, down, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is just how the bike was meant to be ridden as mm -hmm. a Buell. If you had it down, I don't believe you could really get the best out of the bike. Mm -hmm. The geometry and the way it's meant to be ridden is quite flat. Mm -hmm. So that's why we lowered the bars a bit. I mean, for me personally, I think it would look great with the things mm -hmm. right down there, mm -hmm. but I don't think I'd get the best out of it. I think because of the fender, it doesn't look awkward. No. Because fender just covers everything and all the attention you pay to like handmade beautiful fender. And I only noticed when you told me that, oh, it's a cafe with the drag boss. <laughs> yeah, and it was just because I didn't want to build, I didn't want to lose the ride on it mm -hmm. kind of thing. And the thing is, with my position, you talk. can I get on it? Yeah, yeah. No, it's more can my back allow me to get oh, on yeah. it at the moment. Uh, yeah, you can still duck down. Yeah. If you're around town and you want to ride, you actually want it like this. Mm. With the amount of power it's got, you want to, you're yeah, in better control yeah, in this yeah. position. Why do you have two pegs? Um, because you... Um, okay. Yeah. Because I asked for... The seat is actually one and a half. Okay. But you can't actually fit someone on there. So someone it sits on the back like there. Oh, okay. Anyone who's brave enough can sit on the back there and use the pegs. Which I've done some is not comfortable <laughs> and it's incredibly dangerous, but yeah, I have done yeah. some distance with someone on the back. It looks slippery. It's quite slippery, yeah. Um, it's not built for safety. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it, you can go on the back if you want. Yeah, because that was my question. It doesn't, doesn't look enough space to fit two people. You just got to yeah. cling on yeah. really hard. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's your idea, yeah? Yeah. Picking up girls. No, I'm a, I'm a settled <laughs> man now, but um, at the time. At the yeah. time, it was an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Just hold tight. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to slip off. What's the point of riding bikes if you can't pick up girls? Tell me about the brakes. Uh, the How brakes. good are Buell brakes? Because uh, my foot's a bit... Uh, they're not very good. Not the very brakes good. and the suspension is what lets a Buell down. Okay. If I was to invest more in it, that would be the next thing. Mm. This really needs a double disc on both sides. Oh, and it's one disc like it's only like one on disc, Sportster, which yeah. isn't enough nah. really for the thing. <laughs> no. And again, with the suspension, I would kind of toughen it all up a bit. Mm. I'd put kind of stronger suspension on, just firm the bike up. Mm -hmm. But it's funny, even though this is so much more powerful than my Triumph, mm -hmm. I can ride the Triumph what a lot is faster. The engine size of this? 1350. The Triumph has got uh, it's all uprated suspension, yeah. all uprated brakes on it and it's got uh, steering dampeners and everything and that one I can just you know I can push yeah, to the limit yeah, yeah. whereas this one you always feel like you're going fast on a Buell even when you're not because it's so noisy and the yeah. vibrations yeah, and everything yeah, I've been yeah. thinking I'm screwing it down the road and a pizza boy and a scooter's yeah. gone fast <laughs> I ain't actually going as fast as I thought I was yeah. Um, so yeah it's been a it's been on display for a bit um, but no, this summer I want to get it back on the road and really use it again. I think I'll get another bike on the plinth and kind of start. I'm going to come and we're going for a ride. No, I can't wait. I, um, I haven't ridden for a bit because I had a back yeah. surgery. Yeah. And I think this will be my That's kind That's why you're of... moving so slow. Not because he's old, but because he had a back <laughs> I'm surgery. I'm old as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this summer I'm going to really start using this a bit more. 2022, I think it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a year for riding. Everyone. <laughs> and we're going to have a good summer, I hope. And a little bit about your shop. Tell us a little bit about 
of your shop. Um, and then we moved in here about, well, exactly five years ago, at the end of this month. It's when I started writing. I remember the shop was quite oh, really? fresh when I came about four years ago. I came first time. So okay, like, yeah, yeah, so we would have just been settling in then. Yeah. So this is a great old space. It's got about 100 years of history with motorcycles. Oh, okay. This jacket belonged to a guy called Frank who bought the jacket from Lewis Leathers in 1956. And this is the original Bronx with a Bud Gantz label, which is after the film The Wild One came out, everyone wanted the Marlon Brando mm -hmm. jacket. And it was, it, it's always, people don't know, but people assume it's the shot jacket. So Lewis Leathers put an American label in because that's what all the kids wanted. Yeah. Um, and Frank is now 87, I believe, and he still rides. He comes down, he's got a Kawasaki W650 now. And he gave me that jacket. So that jacket's been in here for almost 70 years. I've got pictures of him wearing it outside. Oh my God. And he was in a group called the Ali Pali Tunnup Boys. And this was all bike parking back in the 40s and 50s. So they used to park their bikes in here, then drink cups of tea in the yard. So he was like, it feels exactly how it was when he was a kid. You know, we've got the coffee, bikers. So coming. he feels that this place, when he comes in summer, like last year, is the same as... Yeah, it looks like the same. I've got the pictures from it. Just a visit. <laughs> That's the history. So I love, because London's such a transient city and to yeah, have that kind yeah, of history. Yeah. And then if you see that Norvin fuel tank up there, mm -hmm. that's a Norton with a Vincent engine, that was made in here in the 60s. So a company called the Duguid Brothers would make fiberglass tanks and fairings for cafe racers. Mm -hmm. And that turned up in Wales and someone had painted over, there's a little brass plaque, they scratched it off and found my address so they contacted me. So no, I haven't been able to find much history. I know that they were the Do Good Brothers and that they both ended up in jail mm -hmm. for some reason. So that's all I really know about them. But yeah, this whole uh, street from the 20s onwards was all car garages, uh, tuning shops, mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of motorcycle businesses or kind of more repair kind of sites. So it's a historical place, it's not just... Yeah, yeah, it just I felt never right. Knew that. You never told me that. Right, right, you no. need to bring the camera more often. <laughs> uh, so I didn't know it when I got the space. I always wanted the space because it kind of works for a motorcycle mm -hmm. business, but I didn't know it had so much history within it. So that just feels really right, you know, that mm -hmm. it's, yeah. The clothing that you're selling, it's lots of very limited edition, sustainable and recycled. We don't limited. stock that many motorcycle brands anymore mm -hmm. because I'm not into just people putting a skull on the t-shirt for the sake of it. Yeah, yeah. We're really interested in stuff that's exclusive to us. So everything yeah. we stock is only available in here. A lot of it is we have our own brands. That whole half the shop's our own stuff. So we just buy stuff for quality. Um, most of it comes from brands where they ride themselves. Um, so we've got like Aero Leather from Scotland, mm -hmm. I believe one of the best leather jacket makers there is. Helmet from Germany, uh, Bizen, Japanese from Hong Kong. Everything is more around the subcultures around motorcycling. So there was always a lot of military wear. Mm -hmm. People, um, before you could buy motorcycle jackets, uh, after World War II, people mm -hmm wanted to keep riding the Harleys and they would wear like uh, navy deck jackets because yeah, they were really yeah, warm. Yeah. Same as the mods, it was cheap and plentiful and well made so mm -hmm. military clothing has always overlapped mm -hmm. with motorcycling. Yeah, yeah. And then the other stuff, it's like heavy denims, heavy leathers, just practical work wear. Mm -hmm. um, so we look really about the fabrics, the production, how things Quality. are made. Yeah, It's more like investment clothing, I would say yeah. a jacket like this, you would buy and that's it. For, for the rest of your life, you, you, you will... You I'm will very much a big believer in that. I yeah. think there's a lot of greenwashing with all this sustainability talk about, mm -hmm. you know, this and that. At the end of the day, just buy less and use what you want yeah, longer. Yeah. A leather jacket will only improve with age. It looks yeah. worse oh. the day you buy it in the shop. And venom as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And everything you, I see here, it's, it's something that you see will wear into, yeah. like, it will mold into your shape and will look even better with But you. that's the same with a motorcycle, like we yeah, were talking yeah. earlier, you like know. Like a custom motorcycle. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's better to look worn and worn in and yeah, then it becomes yeah, part of yeah. you and you customise even. Like we embroider them, you put badges on it, patches. It's always yeah. been such a big part of motorcycle culture, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah. Thank you very much for no. an interview showing off your bike. It is the bike, ridden on the roads. It is the bike, but been on the shows and you can do both. You can build a bike for both. Yeah, like, I believe. E equally good for both the yeah. road and the show. Yeah, yeah. It's a good example of it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. And don't forget to visit Bolt London.
We need to show you a scooter because it's your favorite bike, okay. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is the one I've had the longest. I've had this nearly 15 years. And it's the one that puts the biggest smile on my face. And you ride it? I ride it like a lunatic. Really? I think I can beat <laughs> like most. A lunatic. How fast do you go in it? It will go up to about 65. It's got 65? A, it's got a 186 engine. It's got a big bore exhaust. It's got a bigger top end. It's got a yeah, bigger carb on it. Everything. Really? To make, yeah, you can put a lot of work into a can Lambrex. Can you sit on it? Because it's look, it looks I look really ridiculous small. on it. <laughs> I won't lie. I look like a circus monkey in the symbol. <laughs> but I've learned to live with being well. You know, six foot four, you shouldn't be riding scooters. No, but. no, not Lambretta. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the most fun. I can beat most bikes on this. Really? In London, in London. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll always find somewhere I can get through that they can't. Oh so small. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Stephen. even if I can't beat them on the straight, I'll beat them through the traffic. How old is it? This is 1969. So, is it? Yeah. Oh my and God. And then it was painted and it's by... it's going strong. It's going better than it ever has done. Jesus. Um, yeah, I've put a lot of work into the bike in the last couple of years. Now it runs really nicely. Uh, well, I haven't. I, uh, retrospective scooters have put a lot of work into the That's bike. That's a bonus footage for you guys. <laughs> a bonus bike for you. Looks handy. It has a rack and everything. You can get so much stuff in it. I've got a 42-inch flat-screen telly home on that before. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's the good thing with the Lamy. You can fit so much stuff on it really? one way or another. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can see if this one starts. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, you lost your the seat. Yeah, that happened. Ah. Yeah, let me down. Oh, <laughs> the seat. Has it even got petrol? Maybe it's a battery. Damn, it's a no, it doesn't have a battery. Oh, it doesn't have any battery. No. Oh, yeah, it's kickstart, isn't it? Starts, man. It always happens on my vlog. The kickstart doesn't work. It's not a fast time, sorry. No, no. The other way around. One more day. Oh! Amazing! <laughs> Noisy little thing, isn't it? You have to film this on this side. <laughs> it's a boat. <laughs> <laughs> 